What is happening bonsai friends? In this video I am going to be doing some work on this nursery stock Fuji cherry. I'm going to make some decisions about shall I do some air layers and propagate some material from this tree or shall I just go ahead and do a chop and develop somewhere on the base. So if you're new on my channel consider subscribing so let's dive into the first steps on the long road turning this nursery stock Fuji cherry into a bonsai tree. The first thing I'm going to do is gently have a look at the base of the tree because that might impact the decisions that I'm making down the line. If the base is really good I might forego taking some air layers on the basis that we might as well develop the base into a decent tree rather than waste time and energy on air layers. If the base isn't that good we'll maybe look at creating some air layers but the first job is just to uncover the base and see what's going on down there. Right let's dive in close and have a look then shall we? Right let's pull back some of this soil then get rid of some of this moss weeds Probably some roots as well in there. Ah, I thought I'd seen the last of this chopstick for a while. So <clears throat> I've revealed the base enough to know what I'm going to do with this tree. Um, the base isn't fantastic but it's pretty decent, it's got a fairly nice spread, um, a reasonably well distributed set of surface roots um, and it buttresses really nicely. Um, so on balance I think any of the air layers that I was considering just aren't worth it, you know. Um, sure, I could pop an air layer here and, you know, we'll have some fairly nice taper. By the time we've separated it, the air layer's regained strength, we've, we've cut off the unwanted parts. Could have just, could just go to a nursery and buy a fairly cheap tree that's got as much potential and save ourselves the best part of a couple of years. So I'm going to make the decision to create a small shohin sized or mame sized tree from the base and one of these low down branches for the next section. So for the rest of this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin the chop, I'm going to do an experiment, I'm going to take a wedge out, patch the wound and see if we can't get the chop to heal faster by doing it in two stages rather than doing the chop all in one go. I'm going to remove a wedge from the area that I would otherwise completely chop off and the idea is that as resources flow around the wound from above it heals the area from which the wedge was removed and once that's healing over nicely you can then come in and finish the cut completely removing the section which leaves a smaller profile of the former trunk to be healed because where the wedge was taken the healing has already begun leaving less distance for the callus to span if that makes sense. So that's the theory. This is the first time I've actually ever attempted this, so it's kind of an experiment. If it goes wrong, the worst that could happen is that I end up just completely removing the top section and we proceed as if I'd just trunk chopped as normal anyway. Right, let's remove the marker that I placed where a potential air layer could be positioned because I'm not going to do that anymore. Make sure that we've got plenty of space. 
So the first job is to decide where I'm going to do the cut. Now I think that if I was to do the trunk chop I would cut through this area here, remove the top and this would be the continuation of the trunk to form the apex and maybe this could be trained as a branch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a wedge roughly here, about halfway through, up and then back again and the, the, the sugars and starches will flow around the wound encouraging callus to form and then as callus is formed sufficiently in a year or two's time we can come in and finish the cut. So this might seem a little bit excessive taking a couple of years to do a chop but Fuji cherries they're quite slow to heal and I think that rather than being quick and dirty and taking a piece of nursery material hacking it to bits and shoving it in a bonsai container I think if we play the long game and aim for a much higher quality finish I think that's really something to strive for and it's certainly what motivates me in my decision making process so I'm going to go with that so I'm going to create a slight angle chop because we've got the uh, the remaining trunk to encourage healing I'm not quite so worried about doing an angle chop I'm just going to take it nice and slow making sure that I get the cut in the position that I want it what I don't want to do is go too far below the remaining branch that's going to form on a new leader and I don't want to go too far through the trunk and lose any benefit of doing a wedge cut making sure that I'm about the same height and angle on both sides the exit and the entrance Now that we've established the right level and angle, we just pick up the pace slightly. Making sure that we're not going too far. I think about halfway is sufficient. Still looking good. So we're just shy of the halfway mark. There we go, so that's the halfway mark. I left a bit of a step so I've just cleaned that step up. So that's looking about as good as I could hope. I think next time round I <laughs> I'll make sure I've got enough space past the uh, room of the pot. Made it a bit awkward but I think we've got there. So now I'm going to take a wedge out of the top and then come down at an angle like so. So we re actually remove a, a wedge shaped section of the trunk.
Just check that we're aiming for the uh, right place on both sides before we pick up the pace a little. Okay, nice, steady. Check the other side, looking fine. Make sure they've got the right angle. Check the other side again. Looking fine, looking fine. Continue. As I get closer, slowing down. Starting to loosen. Clean that step up so it doesn't interfere. With the healing. Still a bit of a step. So I think I've gone a little bit past halfway, but I'm not too worried. Ultimately, I'll be looking to uh, cut that off completely in the future anyway. And I'm also a little bit low compared to the position of this branch. When I finish the cut, I'll have to come down at a slightly steeper angle than the angle of this section. Now I'm going to clean up the edges with a razor to promote better healing than the, the sort of the, the ripping action of the saw would allow. Nice clean cut cambium is going to heal much better than the, the torn areas that the saw leaves. Just need to expose a small amount of the green cambium. I've had four coffees today, so my hand is not very steady. I've got the shakes, something rotten. top doesn't matter so much but I think it's good to get a good finish all around. So here's the completed wedge cut. All that's left to do now is to seal it. Because these Fuji cherries are prone to fungus it's important to seal these cuts. I'm going to experiment with some foil just to see what kind of a result we get. So the foil that I'm using is sticky back foil peel the back off I'm going to position the foil like so making sure to leave a fairly significant 
covering. Just going to trim away the excess. And then firm that piece down nicely. Then the same with the upper section. Pop that piece in place. It's not so important to cut away the excess at the top. Because we'll eventually be cutting this whole section of trunk off. But we might as well keep it nice and neat. Smooth that down as best we can. Really work it into the, the ridges of the bark to maintain a really good contact and a nice, and hopefully, a, an efficient seal. So it's all nice and snug. Okay, there we have it. That's the wedge cut dressed. All right, there we go. So I've uncovered the base, made the decision to forget doing any air layers. We've taken a wedge cut around the height of this branch which will form the next trunk section dressed it up with some nice shiny aluminium sticky back foil to hopefully keep any nasties out we'll come back and look at this one after the foliage has dropped in the autumn have a look at the wound and see how that's progressing and redress it if necessary so any comments any tips, advice or questions, please do write me in the comments down below. If you're keen to see how this experiment progresses, then hit that subscribe button, ring the bell and you'll get a notification each time I bring out a new video. And thanks for watching and I will speak to you soon.